<laughs> All right. Well, one last question before we go. What's next for Greg? Where does he go? I heard that there's a spot down south that uh, has an nope, open nope. manager spot. It's it's filled. Nope, sorry. <laughs> By no, sorry. We're you? not, not taking over? applications. <laughs> um, hopefully he just takes some time off for now. Let things settle. I think if he jumps into something too quickly, I, I don't think it'd be good for him or the team, uh, at least in terms of like the press. But I, I feel like he'll find his way back into an MLS side at some point. Um, maybe he goes overseas again and, and tries his hand kind of like what Bob Bradley's doing right now. Maybe he he takes some there, kind of gets his feet settled again. And then I don't think it's the last we've seen of Burhalter in, in MLS. And it's not me saying that I want that to happen, but just look at the way this league recycles managers. Uh, I think at some point in time, he will be back in MLS. Yeah, just hopefully right. not with Atlanta. Well, that, that answers my question. Cause there was somebody who had uh, put out a, uh, a tweet that was, I think it was, I think it was Fabian, Fabian Rankle. And he was like, there is no way any MLS team should want Greg back and, and, and want him in the, uh, you know, in, in their team or whatever. And, and I think that's a, I think that's a stretch, right? Like the club game and the, and the national team game two completely different games, right? Especially in MLS where it's a salary cap league, but you were only, you only get what you're dealt. In, in the national team. And, you know, there's always a little bit there where you can mention um, like your selections, right? Maybe you select better than, than others or whatever. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's however the clubs are developing their, their players. That's, that's what you got to work with. Uh, now, did he do a good job with what he had? I don't think so, but it's a different game, right? So going back to MLS and, and being able to build a philosophy from the ground up again with the ability to buy or or develop players in a system that he wants would give him fine success, right? I don't think his, I agree with you. I don't think his coaching career is done. Um, I think he stays at home instead of goes abroad. I just don't think, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really see it over there. Um, he was more successful at home anyway. <laughs> But yeah, you know there there are a couple open spots in 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 MLS, and you know we joke about Atlanta. But I don't I I would agree with you that it's not happening soon. But at the end of the year, if coaches start going and people are looking for things, I think his name gets floated around there. I think we see him next season, and I wouldn't be against that, right? I I don't think he's got bad ideas for a club team or. A, a specific or a team that he can build on his own. I think he had bad tactical ideas for the group that he had, and he wasn't good enough, or he wasn't, he was too reluctant to change them. That is the way I'll put that. So I don't, I don't see him as his, his coaching career is over because of this. I think it is, he just needs to find the right landing home. And his his style of play could work with the right players. It's just these weren't the right players, and he was too reluctant to change to what could work. I I mean he wasn't a world beater when he was previously a coach in MLS, so I'm not like sold on him coming back and like being great, you know. Even though he was good with the national team, and I understand that, you know, he's kind of got his hands tied on who he can bring in. You know, he can't just bring in a full. MLS squad to match his tactics because he'd get crucified for that. But I mean, I, I think he comes back to MLS. Like I said, I mean, it's a league which brought back Chris Armis, Phil Neville. Like they clearly like to bring back managers that are familiar with the league. I think they place too much value on familiarity with the league and salary cap rules over people who can come in and, and prove that they can do uh, or win games tactically. Um, and with that in mind, I think Burholder has a, a leg up on a lot of other managers. Yeah. You know, and it's, I don't think it's, uh, again, I, I, it'll be, it'll be interesting, right? It'll be interesting to see where it goes. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think I would say, I don't think I'd say he's, he's done or, or nobody should want him back. Like, I think the people who are saying that again are are recognizing, you know, you know what he'd be a half decent shout for is one of those teams that 
and, and I want to say, you know, I think San Jose is a, a cheap shot almost, but a team that just, you know, and we talk about a lot when you're down in the basement, you need somebody to come in and say, we are not going to concede as easily, or we're not going to get broken down as we're going to be hard nosed. We're going to do the work. That's what Greg does. Right. So I wouldn't be shocked to see him come in. Oh man. How wild would it be if he goes to like Chicago, right? A Chicago team that's been down for a decade. And it's like, yo, the way we're going to stop this is just by being hard nosed and just, just doing the job that has to be done. I feel like the problem is you get like a Gary Smith situation where it's like, okay, maybe he can take them out of the ground and, and make them like a more consistent playoff team. But his, I feel like his ceiling is capped. Like I well, don't well, see him. Well, as and, like and a what's, top that's level. not, that's not a problem, right? You need, somebody to, like, change, what, you need somebody but, to change. Go ahead. But if you're not going to win anything, then like, what's the point? Like, you're just bringing him in to just make the playoffs every year, and like, culture, culture you're, not, you're not going to bring him in. But you're not going to bring him in. Like, let's see, keep him for three years. He gets them from last place to like the play in to now. You're just straight in the playoffs. You're not going to fire him at that point. Like, he's continuously building up. You're going to have to wait until he either like plateaus or you got to wait for him to fall back down again. And it's like, all right, well, we did all that for what? Sam Allardyce gets paid millions and millions of dollars every year to come in and save teams from the bottom just to just to be there, right? That's a completely different situation. They make listen, money listen, in the listen. Stop speaking. Listen. Use your ears, not your Don't mouth. Don't say stupid things, and I will. I'll stop speaking. When you are down as bad as somebody like San Jose, Chicago, something like that, no, there is no relegation. You're not fighting for your lives in a league. But you need something to turn around a culture. You don't need somebody to come in and be like, we're going to go from worst to first tomorrow. Because that's something that happens when you are. And and I think FCC is the last time we're truly going to see something like that happen ever again. But you need somebody to come in and say, we're going to do the hard work. We're going to get a culture together that is about being tough to beat. We're not going to roll. Or we're not going to be the league's laughing stock anymore. We are going to go in and we are going to do a very, very good job at being hard to beat. And from there, you get confidence. And from confidence, you get results. You may not get to an MLS Cup final. You may not get to a Supporter Shield group. But you're developing a core of players who have a firm belief that they are not going to be rolled over game in and game out. And from there, you can build on that with a different manager, with different players around them who are then going to buy into a system when they come in. But if you don't do that groundwork first, and Chicago is a great example of it. Chicago are top buyers, right? Give me Shakiri. Give me this guy. Give me give me Hugo Kuypers. Give me all these $12, $15 million players to finish 10th and 11th every year. Because they don't have that foundation, the bottom part, to push them to be a tough team to beat. If you develop that first, then you pick out the players in the Tam Gam area, in the DP area. That's how you build success. But you can't do that just by bringing in some fancy manager and saying, yep, here we go. We're going to fix it now. It doesn't work that way. That's what I think long-term. I think that's Greg's full legacy. His full legacy is going to be a guy who can come in and take a team that needs a culture change and get them to be either half decent or or, or good, right? Because he took the national team and made them good, but he didn't make them great. We didn't win a World Cup with him. We won a couple Nations League, and we 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 did that, you know, in and Gold Cups and stuff that we should be winning. But it, he didn't take them to a quarterfinal or a semifinal of the World Cup. We didn't get out of the group in Copa because that's his ceiling. But long term, he is going to be a guy that changes culture. A you know, Bruce Arena is a winner, but Bruce Arena is kind of that same guy that I remember too. Is he's going to come in and just look at you and be like, "You guys all suck," so we're going to fix that by being you know old school. And it worked. So that's that's what I can see Greg doing. And it doesn't have to be an MLS, by the way. It could be somewhere else. But I'm that, I'm just using MLS because I don't know if you guys know this, but we're an MLS podcast. So um, sometimes we we talk about that league and we need to cover it. So I I I disagree. I mean, I think it, it, MLS is different than other leagues around the world, like the Premier League, where if you finish 17th and just avoid relegation, that's massive. That is a huge paycheck every single year. It's massive for the club to be able to reinvest. That's just not the same with MLS. You have a salary cap. There's only so much that you can do. You're not going to collect that much money just by, I mean, obviously everybody stays in the league, but you're not collecting the money just by 
existing in the league. Like the, to get to that level where you're getting that equivalent of being able to stay in the Premier League is to win things. And I just don't think Greg is the manager to win things. Like you were saying, I don't even think you disagree with that. Greg's no, not the no, I don't. going to win you shields. He's not going to win you cups. No, I, gonna, and I don't. And by the way, I, I, I don't want to. I don't. Sorry, I don't want to cut you off. But I don't want to make it sound like I'm comparing an MLS playoff berth to surviving in the Premier League. What I was trying to compare is that you don't need to be a constant winner to be a valued coach, right? You don't need to go in and win the league 15 times out of 16 to be a valuable coach to somebody. That's what I was trying to get at there. Yes, the stakes are completely different. But your value doesn't always have to come from trophies. It can come from a lot of in- intrinsic stuff that can change long term the the scope of your club. That's that's where I was trying to go with that. I I think you you got to go for someone that's got the potential to get you to the top because because I do think you can go from worst to first, a hundred percent. Like you could see it this year. I mean, Inter Miami fourteenth to second. LA Galaxy, 14th. <laughs> Yo, like, your, your first example is going to be the team that has the best player in the world. He that's was on the st- team for half the year last year. That's a stretch. He didn't play in half. I mean, that's years. not the only example. Um, Both the LA Galaxy and the Colorado Rapids, from bottom of the West to in the top four at this point already. Yeah, but that's like, not it, best. It, Hold on. That's not best. They're Okay, LA Galaxy are joint top of the West right now. They're right there. Like that's a team. LA Galaxy is a team that can 100% compete for the cup right now. Okay, I'll give you that. I, I, that's fair. I didn't realize they were that high. I thought they were like fourth. They're they're third, but there there's three teams on 43 points right now. But um, and Colorado is only like six points behind them, so it's it's not like inconceivable that they're up there and, and fighting. But yeah, I mean it. This it's a league of parity, which is a good thing for a lot of teams because you can see your team just turn it around all of a sudden and shoot all the way up in the standings. I mean, don't forget Austin, you know, Austin was terrible the first year and then shot all the way up to second place in the West. And the year after that, that's because this league has parity. So I say, bring in a coach who has the potential to do that versus Greg, who, you know, is probably not going to do that for you. And is just going to kind of give you an Asheville situation. Like you said before, when you compared him to Gary Smith, where you're just gonna like get in the playoffs as the seven seed and then get knocked out after like a game or two in the playoffs. It's like, okay, great, we laid this groundwork. Now what? Like we're just stuck. I don't know how we went from Greg Berhalt to a conversation on on MLS coaching theory and, and what you need to build a team, but you know, that's just what we do here. So 